funds from being looted by youth, many of whom have been linked to corruption in different sectors of the Kenyan economy. Our reporter Cecilia Wakesho Maduva with this report. This was the reaction of Kenyans on social media on Wednesday when news broke that 91-year-old former Vice President Moody Awori had been appointed as one of the seven members of the Oversight Board to manage sports, arts and social media funds. Netizens on Twitter will not take it lightly. A day later, and President Uhuru Kenyatta would have answers to those faulting his move. I'm being criticized. I could see yesterday that I'm appointing a 91-year-old to, to look after the youth sports fund. And let me put you, you put yourself in my shoes. Ukiona vile watu wanaiba pesa. Mimi afadhali nikae na huyo mzee bwana achunge hiyo pesa itumike vile inatakikana. This comes when there has been increased public outcry on how qualified youth are languishing in poverty due to unemployment. According to 2018 Skills Mismatch Report by the Federation of Kenya Employers, 39% of degree holders in the surveyed firm work as clerical officers, 30% as secretaries, 20% as receptionists, and 9% were casual laborers. The report further indicates that 36% of master's degree holders were in positions meant for degree holders. Sasa munataka tuende na tumeona vile watu wakipatiwa kazi kama hiyo vile wanaenda kufanyafanya. Siafadhali tupatia huyo mzee achunge ndiyo iwarudi. Ah, watu waniwache baana mimi staki magomini. Ironically, in a report published by John Gidongwa in 2006, Moody Awori was linked to a multi-billion Anglo leasing scam. In May this year, a photo by the Chief Administrative Secretary of the Ministry of Public Service and Youth, Rachel Shebesh, showing not so youthful leaders at a workshop on matters youth, was highly condemned by Kenyans on Twitter. Last month, during a funeral mass of the late Archbishop John Jenga, Uru had a special message to Moody. Moody, usiwe na haraka, we still need you. <laughs> usiwe na haraka mingi, ubado uko na miaka mingi. Eh, hey, don't be in a hurry to join him. Serve us for a little bit longer here. Other appointments that have sharply been questioned include that of 71-year-old Francis Mudaura, who was appointed as the chairman of Kenya Revenue Authority Board, 75-year-old Chris Sobure as the chief administrative secretary in the Ministry of Transport, and Matu Wamae, whose tenure at the age of 79 as KCC board chairman has been extended to 2020. Cecilia Kesho Maduva, KT News. All right, and that's where we start our discussion today. I'll start with you, Joy, Brenda, and uh, the, there's always a good side to things, and uh, maybe the good side of this one is that in another 50 years, we still have a chance of being appointed. <laughs> At this rate. The relevance stays beyond our years. Old, we become like, like wine. The older we are, the finer the we finer are. The finer you are. In my opinion, on this one, the president has got it horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. If you're looking for people of integrity, there are people of integrity who are still within energetic working years who have got ideas that are relevant to this generation. You know, it's something that baffles me when you want to defend a decision and not using is integrity. I look at them like, are you trying to say that there are no young people or oh, younger wow. people, not even young people, there are no younger people, 91 years old, they're sending Mugabe home you are appointing a 91-year-old and urging him to stay on that he has more years. Are you God? It's one of those things that defies logic. But on the other hand, like I said also with the lawyers, that be that as it may, is there a point that the president is actually making? Especially, for example, if you look at the sports ministry. Mm -hmm. It is true he has given a chance to several young, young people, people, and there have been scandals in the athletics industry, in uh, Olympics, in the ministry itself, in stadia, in losing uh, the calf. We've, we have to get to a place where is there really a point in what he is saying? I don't support his, his argument, but maybe it is time for us to re-examine ourselves. And over and above that, can we also take time now to take stock and say, look, Mr. President, this is unsustainable. Because we have gotten to a place where we need to start thinking transition to the next generation. If we are always stuck with the old guard all the time. I mean, I am in a generation where I think Facebook is with it. There's another day I went to, to State House Girls and I was telling them, find me on Facebook. And they're like, no, you're not on Facebook. We're on Instagram and Snapchat. How old did I feel? Yeah. I am feeling old. And here you're telling me Mudia Wari at 91 years old has got ideas to develop sports, 
and culture, and it is it, it, is it ridiculous. defies All logic. Right, Mambo Leo, do we have a problem with our selection um, process? Because, like Joy mentions, maybe there is a point because there are those who've been given a chance. And sports and culture is a perfect example. We know how many uh, millions basically were From lost, and to this day, yes, we've not even uh, you know sport. followed them. Yeah. And uh, maybe he has a point, but then does that speak to our selection process? Because again. Are you telling me that there are no younger Kenyans who can actually do that job and do it properly? I'll tell you a story. A couple of years back, a feature was done of uh, the Vice President of the Republic of Kenya that time, and it was Moody Aweri. I think that time he was already an octogenarian. And uh, you would be very surprised. He smokes the pipe and he could swim. By the way, a lot of young people cannot swim. So I think prob probably that is why the president has decided <laughs> that uh, this gentleman has qualities, uh, uh, ha has qualities that a lot of us do I'm not I'm not sure what smoking a pipe and swimming will bring on board in now, terms of sports and culture. But on a very serious note, mm. um, it is extremely wrong for His Excellency the President, my president, to appoint Moody Awori to that position. But it is even much more wrong for Moody Awori to, to accept that appointment. It. I am extremely ashamed. He should have called His Excellency the President and told him, look, with tremendous respect, I know you value my worth, but I am not going to take uh, up this job on a matter of principle. Let me tell you something. There are people who have done this country proud in the prime of their time, in the prime of their youth. Moody Awori is one of them, mm. okay? At a time like now when we have a completely new set of challenges. I do not think that the wherewithal he had in the 70s can stand up to the challenge of the 21st century. So I think what we need to do is uh, probably understand where the president is coming, coming from. But I also want to think that there is someone in the process of, uh, in, in the process of um, advising the president on this appointment who is getting it totally Completely wrong. wrong. Mark Bichachi, is there a point there? And again, we're in a cult, well, our society right now, we we're talking about, uh, you know, people stepping aside from their appointments when there's something questionable. But that just seems to not be something that we can do. So Moody Awori, given a job, I mean, he may not be bringing much on board, but hey, who doesn't want a free salary? I am quite puzzled when I look at a CV. 2004 to 20, what, when did he stop being vice president? 2013. Yes. Mm. Okay. Vice president of the Republic of Kenya. 2018 to 2022, uh, chair of sports member. and member. Member. Member of sports. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like UMD. The next job he has is uh, <laughs> his manager <laughs> of. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Mm. But on the other side of the ocean, you've got Al Gore, who's a former vice president. He's gone on to win the Nobel Prize. He's gone on to literally spearhead the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. He is the figurehead internationally for bringing about change in, an, in the environment. In Kenya, we have desperate vice presidents. Kalonzo Musioka famously said, I am willing to be a KYM. I am wondering, what is going on? How can you have been a vice president and lack self-esteem enough to say that now I can craft my own destiny? That your name alone is, you don't need to be a member. Your name alone, the soft power you carry, the finance Moody Awori has, he can finance that budget himself. Why is he getting employed? Does, why, why shouldn't he, listen, why shouldn't he sponsor a football team? Why shouldn't he sponsor uh, AFC Leopards? Why does he need to be appointed to do something that he can do from the goodness of his heart? And because he's failed to do it from the goodness of his heart, then I dare tell my president that is the wrong person to pick. If you picked someone who today was financing football clubs, he was financing that same sports, art, and culture, he was refurbishing the Kenya National Theater, then that person is worth it. You cannot select a billionaire who's been sitting on his laurels and smoking the pipe we are told and then you come appoint him that's that let me tell you it does not make sense mm -hmm. i love my president but let me just tell him that is 
not sensical all at right all. and i guess what we're saying on this panel is that you all agree that that was a wrong appointment but we'd like to hear what you have to say and uh, the question that we're asking is president uhuru's reasoning for appointing moody awari convincing enough for you but let's move on to something else but still matters leadership and we are reviewing the week and this week started on a very very uh, bumpy note especially for those, those of us in nairobi and this was with uh, <laughs> stopping of uh, matatus getting into the cbd again and I want us to look at this from a very wide perspective because it's not just uh, Sonko's decision that seemed not to have been thought through. There was also another incident, and this now I want us to look at it from a leadership perspective. Uh, the question of uh, students who have passed the examinations being taken into schools, then with the schools also now complaining that, fine, you've given us all these students, but where are the teachers? It just seems that we have a culture of doing things without thinking through the whole process. Uh, then knee-jerk reactions, Mamboleo. Monday started off with uh, no matatus into the city, but there are some people who sat in traffic for almost four or five hours, literally, because uh, of that decision, which, of course, was rescinded after. On Monday, most of my people at work arrived at noon, and they wanted to leave at three because they didn't know how to get, get home. Mm. And the following day, they, even if the ban had uh, been, lifted. been lifted, since many of them did not, did not know anyway, they... They, most of them were extremely confused as to how to get to work and, and so on and so forth. Now, this is what I have to say. You know, there is uh, this problem of Nairobi traffic. That problem is going to be here with us for as long as these circumstances we are in continues to obtain. We have said on this station and many others, many times without number, that you see, for us to get that traffic to a place where we can sustain it, where people have to get to work or where, wherever they are going within the timelines we expect reasonably for them to do so, there are a number of things that need to be done. You don't just wake up in the morning and divert the traffic onto a certain direction. I, I, I was coming from Westland side that morning, and when I get to the what used to be Westland's roundabout, then I see policemen diverting all matatus onto um, the Sarit area. So I'm thinking, we have said, let us get a mass transport system in this city. Let us get people off the, the, the matatus. Let us find a way quickly, mm -hmm. you know, of running a system in which most of these people don't have to use the, 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 the matatus. Because even if we divert them onto that other side, they are going to, to still create problems wherever you are diverting them. Mm -hmm. So coming to the question of leadership, now, I do not want to, I don't, I don't want to speculate exactly who sat down and designed that particular system. I do not want to believe for a single moment that the governor of Nairobi sat down alone and decided that I'm going to do this. Many people have claimed that they were part of that, pro that process. I saw uh, the Minister for Transport, the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, uh, saying, you know, it is part of the general uh, pro uh, plan to decongest Nairobi. I have uh, been told uh, that uh, probably the Nairobi re regeneration team was involved, but I am saying this, whether it is Mike Sonko Mbuvi, the governor of Nairobi, or the Nairobi regeneration team, or the Ministry of Transport, Whoever comes up with this kind of policies is extremely confused. And the, you know the problem, uh, uh, Gitonga, is this, that in this country, the people who have the ideas can absolutely never get an opportunity to go execute or implement those ideas. Well, but the people with absolutely no ideas. Get all the opportunities. People with, uh, people at, in their people with <laughs> absolutely no ideas will always get the opportunity to go and so execute what, 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 this lack of what ideas. What is our system, Mark Bichachi? I mean, I, if I sit here, maybe it's a layman's perspective and a way of thinking, but I would imagine if I was to decongest Nairobi, if you ask me right now, mm -hmm. I would probably think of reducing the number of private cars, there not the public cars, because yes. public cars, one vehicle, one Matatu carries 15. Mm -hmm. uh, as a private car, maybe all of us here have one, two, three, four, with only four people. Yes. So that is already creating mm -hmm. congestion. So from a very layman's perspective, maybe help me out here, I would imagine that Removing private cars would be the solution rather than public cars. No, you know, you, you're absolutely right. And guess what? You're not a transport consultant. But you see, that is the level of mediocrity and lack of uh, competence that we entertain in this country. Because 
the amount of non-thinking that occurred for anyone to think that was a good idea is astronomical. But when I saw our governor at the Senate hearing struggling to be awake, I was sure I knew how this decision was made. He had a dream, in it he had a nightmare, and he woke up and he executed what he had dreamt. Because there is no form of reasoning absolutely in that particular measure. Because, as you correctly put it, the solutions for transport in Nairobi are obvious and they are known. Number one, remove uh, private cars from getting into the CBD. That means provide better train services, better bus services, BRT, there's lipstick now uh, on Thika Road. You've got to provide cycle lanes. It, it is obvious to everyone but Songo. Unfortunately, no, but Brenda. Let me, let me just uh, throw in a spanner in the works. This process to decongest Nairobi did not start with Governor Sonko. Way back when Philip Kisia was still the town clerk, this plan was in place. But it has been thwarted time and time again because of private interests. At that time, remember, the suggestion was to first away do away with the 14 seaters, have higher capacity buses so that you have got fewer of them in the road. As of yesterday, we have some Matatu Sako owners who held a press conference saying that there is no way they are getting rid of 14 seater matatus. Why? Because when they tried to implement it, there was a certain transport minister by the name of Ali Makwere who himself had invested in quite a few 14 seater matatus, matatus mm. and did not want to see his investment drinking water, direct translation. <laughs> so we have to get to a place where we divest the personal interest from what's going on in the transport industry. And I, I have a slightly different thinking from my brothers when it comes to the Governor Sonko role in this particular instance. I think Sonko is genius. Because <laughs> I'm waiting no. to hear this one, Brenda. <laughs> no, I, I am at the edge of my seat. I, I think I think Sonko is genius because I'm one of those who very harshly criticized him on that day and CS Masharia. I had very unflattering terms for them. But later when I thought about it, I thought to myself, maybe he's been given pressure from this regeneration project to do something about the the decongestion. So he said, you know what? Here it is, one day of chaos, everybody was like, okay, boss, what did you do? The decision has been rescinded, and now you can sit down and tell them, you know what, I tried it, it failed, you guys give me something to work with. Because in that one instance, it made no sense. He himself knew this thing was going to fail. But I think on Monday, it was set up did you, to fail. Did it you, was actually... Did you just say, you know, th there's only one funny statement. You said Sonko knew. The thing Sonko knows, let me tell you. Did you see he what did. he did? Let me, let me ask you. Did you see when he was asked about the beautification of Mombasa Road just out here, and he had put the Ministry of Industrialization <laughs> as, as a poster there? Yes. Now, you tell me. Who in their right minds puts on a highway posters which people should read on the right hand side? How are people who are driving supposed to read that thing? So you, the, the assumption we are that there was thinking, thinking no, involved in is terms, very dangerous. No, when it comes to this transport <laughs> thing, the thinking was done even before Sonko got into office. So, the plan is there, it's been in place. It's always being thwarted by the Matatu Owners Association, being thwarted by the SACO uh, Association, being thwarted by people who have a vested and, interest and in it. Th this that much is true. Mm. And the other thing is also, there is pressure from national government, there's pressure from the regeneration team to have this thing done. And I think Sonko engaged in a social experiment on Monday and told them, you know what, me, I've done my part, I banned PSVs, look at what happened. Look what happened. Now we've gone back to the place where those people who are insisting that there must be decongestion, okay, fine, let's do this thing that it's supposed to be done. Like, I have made the suggestion, let's go back to what we used to have before, it being a state-run facility, rather than in private hands. But right but the now, the number then, of people who are eating the, from... The, you yeah, saw the, even the question when then, about graphic, remains then, and it goes back then to what I brought in earlier on yeah. leadership. Why can't these decisions be made at a level where they can actually think through them, no, but then give us I'm solutions? Saying. Because the then if this solution... Made, if this there is a blueprint, there is a plan. But that it's blueprint, just that the that, people who are supposed to implement the plan are themselves embroiled, they're, they're eating from the same cookie jar, and they're not interested, therefore... I, I wrote Mambuleo, let me no, hear from no, Mambuleo. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that that's the kind of span in the works that uh, Joe was going to <laughs> Yeah, but, but this, the, I am told, every, every aspect of the Nairobi authorities that was involved in that Monday scam did everything to make sure that there was the highest amount of chaos you've seen in Nairobi exactly. over the years. 
Let me tell you, I am told on authority that policemen, especially traffic policemen, now knowing that if you remove matatus from the CBD, you have taken almost their daily earnings to zero, okay, decided to, to execute that thing in such a chaotic manner as to completely make sure it does not happen. However, um, this is what we must understand. And I do not know where Joy comes from when, he, when she seeks to defend one Mike Mbuvi Sonko. Now By the way, you. Sonko is a person who is capable of defending himself. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Sonko is a gentleman who has decided to run Nairobi alone mm. without a deputy governor. You saw the other day he tried to appoint one Dr. Miguna Miguna as the deputy governor because he knew that that would not go anywhere. The same way maybe he knew this. this and the same way he knew know. that this thing would not go anywhere. There's a method to the Let madness. me tell you, the, the way I observe Mike Mbovi Sonko is this. A man who is throwing a major tantrum against the Jubilee administration. A man who thinks that he is no longer favored. And so because of that reason, he has decided every day that because the Jubilee administration has such a big interest in Nairobi because it is the capital city of, of the Republic of Kenya. This is where 60% of GDP sits. He is going to do everything in the next so many years to make sure that by the end of the day, the Jubilee administration is so annoyed with him that it can only turn the other side and say, Sonko, this is enough. You do it as you want. This is the, the clearest um, indicator of lack of leadership. You do not create the kind of chaos that they created on Monday in a capital city. I was asking myself, this is the most dangerous, this is the, the highest security risk where you have all motorists sitting in traffic. Mm. What better place for bombers to, uh, and, and God forbid, and you know, you are doing that and you are doing a simple social experiment like my friend Joy is, is saying, that would be extremely wrong. I think the first thing that must be sent to Sonko is very clear information that the fact that you are governor of Nairobi does not allow you a license to treat Nairobians as you want. All right. Mark Bichachi, there is a saying, and I think it's an African saying, that you feel sorry for, the, I'm translating it loosely, you feel sorry for the feet that are under a madman's head. <laughs> and this, because <laughs> those feet will be taken through fire, they'll be taken through water, they'll be taken everywhere. Now, the question is, Nairobians, we elected Mike Movisong. Yes. Are we paying for our sins? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, Mombaleo has been kind. <laughs> Gideon Buvi Sonko, if you look at even how he handles CDF, this is a guy in constant panic. There is no expenditure that happens in County Hall today where Sonko has not signed, even if it's for a stick for a gem. It, it, Nairobi is under siege, and the captor is its own governor. Nairobi is under serious threat, and the terrorist is its own governor. That is the problem. This <laughs> Uh, plan that Joy is talking about. Indeed, it, has, it had been there, but Sonko executed it half-baked. He took half of it and applied it. It's like putting on lipstick half of your face. But you will look insane. <laughs> not, not intentionally. But the, let me tell you the truth. Are we trying to say that Gideon Bovi is lucid in his decisions? You are, are we trying to say that Gideon Bovi is serious about what he's doing? You are talking about method to madness. Please include the fact that there's madness in that statement. He is orchestrating madness. He's exactly. having an orchestra of madness. But and he's throwing a childish tantrum at the cost of Nairobians. Because how can you say, as a city governor, that Nairobi has been beautified from your pocket. <laughs> Are you in your own opposition? <laughs> you, you know, this, it's, it's not a method of madness. It's mm. just madness. Mm. It's complete madness. Why do you think he does not want a speaker? He doesn't want a speaker because he's scared he can be replaced. So now he doesn't have a deputy governor. He doesn't have a speaker because he knows the Constitution says that if anything happens to him, there's a, there's a deputy governor to take over or a speaker to take over. So for as long as the two are not there, Gideon Bovi feels safe. So this is a guy who's playing Russian roulette with our lives to, for his own political experience. All right.
Uh, we'll need to conclude at some point. And uh, one more thing that we've not looked at is the members of Parliament Sparks, which uh, may go through the third reading and are going to be increased. Joy Brendam Devo, again, I want to look at it now, but in reflection to 2022 that's coming, because these are the leaders that we seem to keep putting in the same position again and again. Then we'll have this discussion again. And you know, the, the, the law changed such that if parliamentarians do any amendment to the law that gives them any pe uh, pecuniary yes. interest, it's not ad applicable to their tenure, it's in the next tenure. Right. So these people are planning, <laughs> hoping that they're the ones coming back to enjoy these parks. But be that as it may, I think the president has already issued a, a, a little indication that if it comes for assent, he's not going to assent to it. But again, we give ourselves a constitution that allows MPs to you don't assent, let it come back to us. We'll just sit it out and eventually we shall have our way whether or not we assent to it. Now that brings us to should we come to a place where we are reviewing or taking an audit of our constitution to see what actually works and what does not work. Because the legislature is supposed to be checking the executive and the executive is supposed to be checking the legislature. That's what we're talking about, checks and balances. But what we have now in Kenya is a lot of power play. And that's why even what is happening in Nairobi, it's part of that power play. Is somebody deciding, you know what, you're giving me pressure, you want this sort of results. Tell you what, here it goes when it all fails and then you come back. back and tell me, you know what, now let Do me run thing. this as mm. the way I want to run it. Because don't forget, Mike Mbubi Sonko, one of his uh, uh, legitimate or one of his known businesses <laughs> is he is a matatu operator. So, or he used to be anyway, I don't know if he still runs some buru matatus. So you can expect that in this particular equation, he knew exactly what he was doing. And that's why I keep saying there was a method to this madness. But when you see MPs coming to a place where they want to whittle down the the part of the SRC in their lives. They want to increase, I mean, rent-free houses and they want to have, it's absolute ridiculousness because that tells you the mentality of our members of parliament is that they, we, they, we are beholden to them mm. for being our leaders, mm. that we owe them a certain lifestyle, that we owe them a certain class. Where in the world have they seen this? With the kind of GDP that we have, we cannot afford this. And yet our own leaders do not feel our pain. This is the Marie Antoinette syndrome, where you're wondering when people are crying that there's no bread, can't they eat cake instead? Yeah, absolutely. Our MPs need mm -hmm. to come to a place where somebody puts them in their place. And that somebody has to be Kenyans. We have to come to a place where we're more selfish, when we are more selfish about the leaders we elect. Mm -hmm. Leaders who don't feel our pain, mm -hmm. We, we need, I, I wish Kenyans would get to a place we start dumping MPs in dumpsters so they understand, they understand you know what? where we are. All right, and we'll need to wind this. up Mambo Leo. And, you know, one of the things that we look at, even when we look at now leadership and how we elect our leaders, who suffered the most on Monday? It is the middle class. Yes. And they're the same people who will not go out and vote. So what's the message that we should get from these experiences that we're going through? I have a message for Kenyans, but that will come later. This is what I must say about the Kenyan parliament. In 2013, at the introduction of the Senate, most of the more seasoned, fairly well-acquainted members of parliament of the older government um, decided to move to Senate because they thought that was the place. Now, today, I can tell you, Mike, that the National Assembly of the Kenyan Parliament is the most mediocre since independence. True. People who cannot even read their own names in English, okay? These are people who understand only one thing, mileage allowance, uh, committee allowances and so CDF. on and so forth and CDF. What have we done in this country? We have decided as a Kenyan people to elect CDF managers instead of people's representatives mm -hmm. and the quality of government that you can see because let's, 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 let's face it, this is a presidentialist system where we have what we call government by committee. Parliament is supposed to play a very critical role in the administration of our affairs in respect of a government of this kind. But what are you going to be able to find? You are going to be able to find people who will go to committees because they know that an executive, a chief executive officer of a certain state corporation is going to appear here tomorrow. They are always looking at newspaper, newspapers to see who, who's Whose, uh, whose state corporation has a crisis, so that they can jump in and purport to investigate, call them to those committees so that those people can bring the money. But on the other hand, Kenyans need to go back and elect people who can serve them as leaders in those positions. Mark, your closing comments. Any leader who cannot walk a mile in your shoes is not worth being a leader. Any leader who can sit and say, 
Um, I, follow my Prado. Yes, follow my <laughs> Prado. I have 800,000 shillings a month, but I still need more money. That is someone who's totally divorced from the reality of being Kenyan. Because the truth is, many Kenyans survive with their wives and children on less than 30,000 shillings a month. There's a watchman in this city who wants 9,000 and he has a wife and children. If I, an MP is not sensitive to that, that is an insensitive MP. But Joy, let me tell you, you know when our MPs had check and balances? They, uh, they had check, the one you bank, and they had bank balance. So those Whoa. are the checks and balance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have to wind it up right there because of time. Joy, Brenda, Mdivo, Mark, Bichachi.